Just weeks after arriving in Ukraine, a Patriot air defense system has reportedly shot down one of Russia's Kinzel missiles. Of course, we already knew Kinzel was more hype than hypersonic, but in the days that followed this intercept, a number of competing narratives emerged. Did Ukraine deny the intercept took place? Is the wreckage we've seen in pictures and videos even from Kinzel? Let's dive into this. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. Right off the bat, those of you who've watched this channel for a while know that we've already covered Kinzel in depth more than once. But I want you to know that I tried to include as much new information as possible, not just about the intercept, but about the weapon itself. So even those of you who are familiar with the past videos will still get something of value out of it. But we have a ton to cover, so let's get right into it. According to reports, in the early morning hours of May 4th, a Russian MiG-31 launched a KH-47 M2 Kinzel from inside Russian airspace at a target in the Ukrainian capital city of Kyiv. That missile was then intercepted by a newly deployed American Patriot air defense system. Initial reports of this intercept hit social media as early as Friday, but it wasn't until Saturday, May 6th, that Ukrainian officials confirmed that it happened. And by then, the Kremlin's sprawling information operations machine was already steaming ahead at full speed. Leveraging misquotes from Ukrainian officials, some irresponsible media behavior, and the general fog of war to plant the seed of doubt in the general public before official confirmation could even be released. But this sort of disinfo campaign is nothing new for Kinzel. In fact, Kinzel and disinfo have gone hand in hand since the weapon was initially unveiled all the way back on March 1st of 2018. That day, Russian President Vladimir Putin gave a speech in which he unveiled a whole slew of new weapons that were meant to rebalance the scales of military power between Russia and the West. Among these new Russian superweapons were two new missiles that he said could achieve such incredible speeds that they'd be all but impossible to stop with even the most advanced air defense systems on the planet. Those weapons, of course, were the KH-47 M2 Kinzel and the avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicle. Of course, in the years since, we've learned a great deal about Russia's actual military capabilities. And after years of me writing analysis pieces about how Russia's focus on these high-profile but not particularly functional programs was negatively affecting their ability to field real combat capabilities, Russia went ahead and invaded Ukraine, seemingly intent on proving me right. I mean, yes, this is just me flexing, but I was writing about how Russia manipulates Western media to convey a false image of military capability as early as 2018. On February 2nd of last year, I published a story called Why Russia's Military Isn't Quite as Powerful as It Seems. And then on February 22nd, I published a follow-on called How Russia Uses the Media to Convey a False Image of Military Prowess, notably two days before this invasion began. So the next time you hear someone claim that all the Western experts and analysts got it all wrong about Russia, you can let them know that that isn't true. It's just a complicated topic and they weren't looking in the right places. But now that I'm done awkwardly patting myself on the back, let's get back to Kinzel and talk about how Russia has leveraged confusion around the many definitions of the word hypersonic for their own means. Because I would contend that hypersonic may be the most confusing term in defense technology today, thanks to multiple overlapping real and perceived definitions that are leveraged by public affairs officials and hyperbolic headline-craving news outlets alike. In a strictly scientific sense, hypersonic is a word we use to describe an object that travels so fast that it begins to change the very makeup of the air it interacts with. Now, this transition can take place at a whole range of speeds depending on a multitude of variables and factors. But because it commonly starts at right around Mach 5, or around 3,838 miles per hour or so, we tend to call Mach 5 the hypersonic barrier just for the sake of simplicity. 
And that Mach 5 definition tends to work in most discussions about high-speed flight, but there are other common definitions that have surfaced within different circles. One example of an alternate definition for hypersonic is the ability to travel at 1.6 kilometers per second. You'll often hear that definition leveraged by American air defense experts like our friend Sergeant First Class Long, who goes by the name Habitual Line Crosser here on YouTube as well as on TikTok. But regardless of which of these definitions you prefer, you should should know that ballistic missiles have been traveling at these hypersonic speeds since their very inception, with Germany's V-2 rocket back in World War II. Since then, countless weapons have been tested or put into service that were capable of achieving hypersonic speeds, including every nuclear-tipped ICBM and SLBM in service around the world. In fact, while Kinzel's top speed is reportedly Mach 10 and sometimes claimed as high as Mach 12, America's Trident II SLBMs hit Mach 24 as they close with their targets. But there's a reason the U.S. doesn't classify these weapons as modern hypersonic missiles. You see, what makes hypersonic weapons special isn't just the ability to fly at high speeds, but it's the ability to sustain those speeds while maneuvering. And it's that maneuverability at speed that makes them so dangerous. Air defense systems intercept inbound missiles a lot like a quarterback leads a receiver when playing football. You see the trajectory the receiver's on, and you throw the football not where the receiver is, but where you predict the receiver will be by the time the ball gets there. It's basically just a mathematical prediction, so when hypersonic missiles change course, it renders that geometry moot. And because of the high closing speed of these weapons, you often won't have a chance to do the math again before the missile reaches its target. And to that end, there are two classes of modern hypersonic weapons that are said to be capable of doing this. Hypersonic glide vehicles, or HGVs, are the only ones in service today. They're carried aloft by a conventional rocket booster before separating and gliding, unpowered, but maneuvering toward their targets at extreme speeds, often faster than Mach 20. The other modern class of hypersonic weapons are hypersonic cruise missiles, or HCMs, and they fly much more like conventional cruise missiles, or like a suicide drone, just at much higher speeds thanks to exotic propulsion systems like supersonic combustion ramjets, also known as scramjets. Kinzel, however, is neither of these classes of modern hypersonic weapon. Russia's KH-47M2 Kinzel is an air-launched ballistic missile that achieves hypersonic speeds in the exact same way practically all ballistic missiles always have. And that is by using a conventional rocket booster and a fairly predictable ballistic flight path into the ground. And the best evidence we can point to for that is Kinzel's lineage. It's an air-launched version of Russia's 9K720 Iskander-M short-range ballistic missile that was just given a new air-to-ground guidance system that evidence suggests is jam-packed with American and European hardware. And in fact, that Iskander-M lineage also brings the Kinzel's range into question. The Iskander-M has a range of just 300 miles, and it's recently been discovered that Russia has been apparently including the the combat radius of the launching aircraft into Kinzel's reach. Rather than a range of more than 1,200 miles, as Putin claimed, it's now believed that Kinzel's range is no more than 700 miles. But because Kyiv is less than 250 miles from Russian airspace, and even Ukraine's western city of Lviv is around 600 miles, that still means, however, that all of Ukraine is within Kinzel's reach even when launched from Russian airspace. All right, now that we're armed with a firm grasp of what Kinzel is and what it isn't, let's talk about the timeline of this intercept and the narratives that emerged immediately thereafter. Less than a month ago, the first elements of the Patriot air defense system started arriving in Ukraine, and to date, it appears Ukraine is operating two of these systems, one provided by the United States and another by Germany. And while two may not seem like much, you should know that each of these systems rings in at more than $1.1 billion, so two isn't all that bad. Now, as we've covered in the past, the MIM-104 Patriot Air Defense System did see pretty poor performance in its first ever deployment during Operation Desert Storm back in 1991. According to reports, Patriot intercepted only about 25% of the ballistic missiles fired into its areas of operations, but that's sort of to be expected. Patriot was developed specifically to counter highly capable Russian fighters, which, while plenty quick, certainly don't travel at speeds in excess of Mach 20 like ballistic missiles often do. 
In the years since, the Patriot system has seen literally hundreds of updates and upgrades, all meant to make it better at intercepting ballistic and cruise missile threats as well. And as a result, today, Patriot has better than a 95% intercept rate on the same sorts of targets. Like most modern air defense systems, Patriot stops inbound threats by shooting a missile with a missile. And Patriot's interceptor missiles today fall into two primary families, Pac-2 and the newer and more capable Pac-3. Now, I've gone further into depth into the different types of interceptors in a previous video, so I'll keep it light here. But because it's been reported that Ukraine has received Pac-3 interceptors from both the US and Germany, and that seems like the most likely weapon used for this intercept, let's go over it briefly. While the Pac-2 missiles use blast fragmentation warheads to take out incoming missiles or aircraft, the smaller and more modern Pac-3 missiles leverage hit-to-kill technology to destroy targets with sheer kinetic force. And while the Pac-2 missiles come from Raytheon, the Pac-3 missiles were developed later by Lockheed Martin, so they're a completely new clean sheet design meant to maximize the Patriot system's capability set. Now, these interceptors can be fired before the Patriot system even has a weapons-grade lock on a target. Instead, it can guide the Pac-3 missile in the general direction of an inbound threat using a data link. And then, once the Pac-3 interceptor is close enough, it transitions to its own onboard active KA band radar seeker for terminal guidance into that target. And it is incredibly maneuverable along the way, thanks to 180 solid fuel attitude control motors positioned all around the forward section of the missile's fuselage. Now, these allow for rapid and dramatic changes in direction, and that all makes the Pac-3 interceptor really well-suited for engaging fast-moving targets, even if their smaller size does give them a bit less range than the Pac-2. So with the Patriot system in Ukraine, we can now fast forward to the night of May 3rd and the early morning of May 4th, when Russia launched what Ukrainian officials have called the largest barrage of drone and missile airstrikes into the city of Kyiv since the beginning of the year. But shortly after the attack's conclusion, the head of the Kyiv City Military Administration, a man named Sergei Popko, and I apologize if I mispronounced that, reported that Kyiv's layered air defense approach had successfully intercepted everything lobbed their way, which he described as barrage munitions and missiles, presumably ballistic. And this is where the confusing timeline of statements about the Kinzel intercept begin. The following morning, on Friday, May 5th, the Ukraine-based outlet Defense Express seems to have been the first to report that one of Russia's Kinzel missiles had been intercepted during the fray. According to their coverage, the outlet received images from an unnamed source that looked a great deal like wreckage from a previously confirmed failed Kinzel launch. Their reporting went on to compare the images of that wreckage to images of other downed and intact weapon systems to substantiate their claim that the images did indeed show the wreckage of Russia's infamous faux hypersonic Kinzel missile. Now, just hours after this story went up and started making the rounds on social media, a journalist asked Ukrainian Air Force spokesperson Yuri Idnot. Now, I know I butcher every one of these names, and I apologize. This one in particular I found spelled more than one way, so please just bear with me. But regardless of pronunciation, when asked about this intercept, he responded, and I quote, Although there was a possibility of their use, no ballistic missiles were recorded. Now, that single quote went on to be the basis for all of the headlines that you may have seen saying that Ukraine denied intercepting the Kinzel missile, when that response really seems instead to suggest that ballistic missiles like Kinzel may have been among the weapons intercepted over Kyiv that night, but at that point, he had no official reports of it. Now, according to the New York Times, and I can't independently corroborate this, Lieutenant General Mikola Olischuk, the commander of the Ukrainian Air Force, was already aware of the Kinzel intercept by this point, but he chose not to release the information yet for the sake of operational security. Instead, he went on record to urge the public not to share information or images that could compromise the security of Ukrainian air defense positions. And the following day, seemingly with these security concerns managed, Olaschuk himself took to the social media platform Telegram to make the official announcement. Now, the following is part of his statement that I translated via Google Translate. Congratulations to the Ukrainian people on a historic event. 
Yes, we brought down the unparalleled dagger. It happened during the night attack on May 4th in the sky of the Kyiv region. The KH-47 missile was launched by a MiG-31K from the territory of Russia. Immediately thereafter, the Ukrainian Air Force and Ukrainian Ministry of Defense released statements of their own echoing the same. And it was at this point that major news outlets began reporting on the intercept. But while those with a vested interest in Russia's success in Ukraine continued to call this intercept Ukrainian propaganda, on Tuesday, Pentagon President Press Secretary General Pat Ryder gave the first formal American confirmation of the intercept, first confirming that a Russian missile was downed via the Patriot Missile Defense System, and then after being questioned by a journalist, confirming that that missile was indeed Kinzel. And while for some this was enough, plenty of folks were still asking for genuine evidence of the intercept. And on Wednesday, May 10th, German journalist Paul Ronsheimer attempted to provide just that. Ronsheimer posted a series of videos on Twitter of what he said was the collected wreckage of the downed Kinzel missile showed to him by Ukrainian authorities. But rather than proving the intercept happened once and for all, the footage raised more questions than it provided answers. And in fact, that footage itself would be cited by Russian activists online as proof that the whole Kinzel intercept story was fiction. You see, the intact nose cone shown in Ronsheimer's footage does not appear to have the same diameter or even overall shape that we know Kinzel's nose cone has, and many began suggesting that instead it was debris from a Russian bunker buster bomb, the Batab 500, instead. And that claim, alongside other alleged evidence that the intercept wasn't real, like the idea that the missile was painted the wrong color, all very quickly found their way into Kremlin-friendly news outlets, as well as the comment sections under just about any content you can find online about this Kinzel intercept. In fact, regardless of what I say from here, you can rest assured that you'll find plenty of people advancing that narrative, either honestly or otherwise, in the comments below this very video. And here's the thing. I get it. In fact, the first few times that I watched these videos, I was convinced that I was not looking at debris from the Kinzel missile. And if you follow me on Twitter, you probably saw my tweet to that effect. Of course, if Ronsheimer's videos weren't really of Kinzel debris, that wouldn't mean for sure that the intercept didn't happen. It would just mean that either Ronsheimer or the officials he spoke to weren't very trustworthy and were just chasing some clout for themselves. But as is bound to happen from time to time, after I went ahead and tweeted to the world that I didn't think this footage was real, I found some evidence that suggested that it, in fact, is. You see, it turns out there's good reason for many of us to think that nose cone looked too small. It's because it's not a nose cone, and maybe we're all a little too quick to think that we can be experts in assessing ballistic missile intercept debris via Twitter. In my research, I found my way to the Twitter account of one John Ridge, who then graciously pointed me toward the analysis work of a Ukrainian specialist named Andrei Tarasenko. Now, in my efforts to vet Tarasenko's credibility, I found a wide range of news outlets citing him as an expert in defense technology with a heavy emphasis on armored vehicles. And when I say wide range, I mean it. He hasn't just been cited by Western outlets like the BBC, but also by Russian outlets like Sputnik. And Tarasenko's analysis of the wreckage offers some interesting conclusions. As Tarasenko explains, the nose cone we see in the video isn't a nose cone at all, but rather part of the weapon's internal warhead assembly. Now, I'm not going to directly quote Tarasenko because his work is in Russian and the translation's a bit clunky, but in a series of tweets posted on Wednesday, May 10th, he offers an in-depth analysis of the wreckage, drawing direct comparisons to previously confirmed Kinzel wreckage from a failed launch and public information about the Kinzel's design. Ultimately, Tarasenko concludes that the footage does indeed show internal components from a Kinzel missile, alongside some other debris that is labeled in video as part of a KH-55 air-launched cruise missile. So just to summarize in tongue twister fashion, those who claim this can't be debris from a Kinzel missile because that nose cone doesn't belong to a Kinzel missile should know that that's not the nose cone of the Kinzel missile, but it is nonetheless debris from a Kinzel.
So what's the final verdict here? Well, it's essential to remember that Russia relies heavily on foreign weapon sales to fund their own defense developmental programs, and as such, they have a vested interest in overstating the capabilities of their most advanced systems. And as we've discussed on this channel before, it also looks a lot like Kinzel's air-to-ground guidance system is heavily reliant on European and American hardware, making Russia's claims that it's this advanced, unparalleled weapon pretty comical. It's like Ford putting a Chevy small block in the new Mustang and then saying Chevy can't compete with their advanced engineering. So let's do away with journalistic etiquette for just a minute here and call a spade a spade. We've known Russia's lied about the Kinzel's heritage, design, and capabilities for years now. We know that it's nothing more than an air-launched ballistic missile, and further, we know that America's Patriot air defense system is capable of intercepting ballistic missiles. We know that despite Russia's claims, Kinzel isn't unstoppable, and we know Patriot can intercept it. And now, with official confirmations coming from multiple national intelligence agencies and a heap of evidence all saying that's what happened, I think it's very likely that that's what happened. Now, that's not going to convince everybody, especially those who've been defending Russia fervently throughout this conflict. If you're familiar with the sunk cost fallacy, you already get it. But in case you're not, it's the phenomenon whereby a person will refuse to abandon a strategy, or in this case, a position, no matter what evidence is presented, no matter how clear it is that abandoning that position would make more sense or be more beneficial, because they've already invested so much in it. Because, ironically, the same people who believe and defend Russia's claims of Kinzel being an invincible hypersonic missile, despite Russia offering no evidence to substantiate it, will now never accept any amount of evidence that says it isn't. But at least the rest of us can sleep a bit better at night knowing that the fraud that is Russia's hypersonic Kinzel missile has finally been unmasked like a Scooby-Doo villain as the ballistic missile it always was. And on that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.